This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are hot surface igniter types, their operation, and the troubleshooting of these in a gas furnace. The purpose of a hot surface igniter in a gas furnace is to ignite the fuel gas from the direct ignition gas valve. However, this is installed in the back, and you may not be able to visually inspect it or visually see it. And you don't want to pull it out because you don't want to accidentally break it. So you can test it with your multimeter right here. But this is what it looks like in the back. You have your hot surface igniter over here. And when that turns cherry red uh, due to electrical resistance and heat, then what's going to happen is your, your gas is going to come out of these burner tubes and it's going to get ignited. So anytime that you have power to your furnace and you have a call for heat to turn on and you have your door switch closed, your sequence of operation for heat is going to turn on. And that's going to start with the inducer motor running first and then the pressure switch is going to prove that the inducer motor is running and it's going to mechanically close an electrical switch. Then you're going to have your control board is going to send power, 120 volt power, to your hot surface igniter which we're going to be measuring with our multimeter. So we see 120 volts now and now you can see that our hot surface igniter is glowing. Now the next thing that occurs is the direct ignition gas valve is going to allow gas in there and then it's going to get ignited. However, I have this in the off position right now because I just want you to be able to see the hot surface igniter in the back. And so now what I want to do is I want to take you over and show you uh, some troubleshooting techniques that you can use in order to determine if your hot surface igniter is good or bad. Here we have three hot surface igniters and I'm going to power each of the three with 120 volts at the same time. So I just powered them. And so you can see the one on the right, which is a silicon nitride, that one started turning cherry red faster than the silicon carbide over on the left. Now the one in the middle is actually bad, but if this was in the, uh, in the unit and you didn't see it glowing, what you want to do is you want to determine what's wrong. In this case, you can see it's actually partially glowing. It's actually making contact a little bit, and so that hot surface igniter has a partial crack in it, it looks like, and it's in that upper uh, right-hand portion. Now I've turned the power off, and what I want to do is take electrical resistance readings with our multimeter while the power is off on each one of the hot surface igniters. So I'm no longer powering the hot surface igniters, so they are disconnected now, and I have my multimeter set on electrical resistance, and I'm reading 0, 0.0 ohms, it's very important to test your multimeter out before using it to make sure that your probes are intact and good. So right now we're reading 0, 0.0 ohms, which means we're connected. And if we were to disconnect, then you're gonna see, oh well. So let's read our first hot surface igniter first. And this is the uh, silicon carbide one that was working. And so we're reading 58.7 ohms. And so that's within that range of like say 35 to say 65 ohms for normal 120 volt hot surface igniters. Now let's read the second silicon carbide hot surface igniter. And this is the one that took a while to start up. And you can see that we're in kilo ohms. So we have 10.5 kilo ohms. So we're way higher in electrical resistance than the, the good hot surface igniter, and that's because this is on its way out. You saw it still light up, but it doesn't have that many more times between powering it and non-powering it until it completely breaks. And then the multimeter is going to read OL, just like this one does right here. So once again, a silicon carbide, and so we're reading OL on that one. And you can see that this one this one has a crack right there. And so now let's go ahead and read another bad silicon carbide. And so this one's bad right there in the middle. So if it has a high electrical resistance or OL, then you know that that hot surface igniter is bad. So we're reading OL. Here's a different type of silicon carbide. So this is a spiral type, and you can see that this one's cracked right in the middle. So these are the kind of an older style version of a hot surface igniter. There's a lot of them now that are mainly just the silicon nitride. Once again, you see OL, so that one's completely broken open. And so right here, let's measure our electrical resistance of our silicon nitride. 
So we're measuring 48 ohms. And so that one is good. You also notice that this silicon nitride was the first one to light up and it's because there's less mass on it as well. And it's also gonna hold heat less. So it's actually gonna last quite a bit longer. The silicon nitrides last a lot longer than the silicon carbide as well, just due to the material makeup of it. Uh, but these, what the whole point is, is, you know, people ask, why is it shaped like that? And the whole point is surface area contact with the gas. So as the gas is coming across here, you know, some of the gas is going in between and it's getting ignited. So it's very important to have these silicon nitride hot surface igniters uh, positioned in, in a manner where they're fully getting enveloped by the gas in order to ignite the gas. And so that's why some manufacturers are even not even putting these straight, straight perpendicular to the gas. They're actually putting them on an angle so you have more surface area contact when you're going to ignite the gas. Here's a couple up close shots of the hot surface igniter, just so you can see the break point. Here's another one. Here's another one. So it's very faint and you're not going to be able to see this uh, from the back of the combustion chamber. So it's very important in order to read the electrical resistance on the wire connector for the hot surface igniter. So remember that you do not want to remove the hot surface igniter from the combustion chamber when determining if it's bad. So you just want to check a resistance value. So you turn the power off to the furnace, disconnect the, the power plug here to the HSI, and then you can go ahead and just measure your electrical resistance. And so you can see we're measuring 62 ohms. And so really, if it's, if it's under 100 ohms, it should be good. Here you see another hot surface igniter that we're going to check without removing it from the combustion chamber. And you can see that we are measuring an electrical resistance of 98 ohms. So that's a little higher than a lot of the other ones, but it is still good. It is not in kilo ohms. So usually they're around 35 to 65 ohms. You can see that this one's up a little higher, uh, but if it's around say 100 ohms or less, it's gonna be good as long as it doesn't read OL and as long as it's not extremely high electrical resistance indicating a crack. Now, if you're gonna replace a silicon carbide with a silicon nitride, the replacement uh, hot surface igniters come with a variety of pieces. And the whole point is to uh, get this uh, silicon nitride into the correct position. And so you can see that this one right here is right on the edge of this uh, burner retention head. It's, it's right in the channel here. And the whole point is that you wanna have this to have as much uh, surface area uh, that's gonna come in contact with the gas. So you want a proper ignition to take place. You don't want this kind of down too low or up too high or out of the way. And that's why they give you a bunch of different brackets uh, for a replacement in order to try to get it into the right position. Some systems are gonna need to have the silicon carbide replaced with the silicon carbide. So if you replace a silicon carbide with a nitride one and it just doesn't seem to be firing off smoothly, you're gonna need to reposition this hot surface igniter right here. And so you can just replace it with the same exact one and you know it has the correct amount of surface area in order to ignite the gas. It's just that these do not last as long as this version right here. I want you to notice that also in older furnaces compared to say a newer furnace, the older furnaces would end up burning out the hot surface igniters real quickly, sometimes even once a year, it was really bad. Uh, but the newer furnaces have a, a lower time period in which these hot surface igniters are powered. And so it's making those uh, silicon carbide hot surface igniters last longer. And so there's one more thing I wanna show you. I want you to be aware that there is such thing as a 24 volt hot surface igniter as well. And these particular ones are found on smart valves. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one on and you can see I'm not holding it by the hot surface igniter wires, just by the flame rod wire. Uh, but you can see that right there, that's powered with 24 volts. And I'm gonna turn the power off now. And I wanna show you that we can check the electrical resistance on this as well. And you see that we are measuring for say 3.8 ohms. So you can see the electrical resistance value is much lower on a small hot surface igniter such as this. Uh, so once again, as long as it's not reading OL, it should be good. And as long as it's not reading an extremely high electrical resistance where there's a crack forming, um, then, it's, then it's still good.
So I hope this video on hot surface igniters has helped. And if you want to learn more about each VAC, make sure to check out our website over at acservicetech.com where we have a bunch of resources such as articles, quick tips, calculators, quizzes. And we also have our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. So make sure to check all that out over at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.